back to the Wandering Star Farmhouse. Today I am in my closet because this is where I have my pantry of home canned goods. I don't have a lot of clothes, but I do have a lot of food. I wanted to take a video kind of right at the end of the harvest season to show the totality of everything that we had kind of produced on our homestead this year, but I didn't get to that video before we started pulling from our pantry. We started using things, but Jess from the Three Rivers Homestead just came out with her pantry challenge kickoff video, and I will be joining the pantry challenge again this year. And so I figured this is a good time to show our pantry as well. So the first section right here, from here to here, this is all tomato sauce. Most of it I seasoned with Italian herbs, but some of it is, is not. So we've got, we've got 24 pints of tomato sauce left here at this point. In the next section, I have a little bit of salsa. This is the, the peach pepper salsa. I, the peach pepper salsa I made last year. Uh, some bruschetta I made last year, which is herbed tomatoes. Not quite salsa, but, and then this is the salsa I made this year. And we've opened some of this already. I really like this. This is the basic ball kind of fresh salsa recipe. It's super good. I have one jar of canned pickles left from last year. And uh, this is a spicy jar. It's got a pepper in there. Six pints of green beans. And then here is our homemade vanilla. I have a video where we, we made this and we've been, we've been using it already. I have three little jars and one big jar back here. Next I have some chicken bone broth and some beef bone broth. On the next row I have diced tomatoes, 10 pints of diced tomatoes. And then this starts into our applesauce section. This is all applesauce except we have one jar of peaches from last year still. And then we get into some of the other sweet stuff. Here is our, our jellies and syrups. I have the corn cob, corn cob jelly, and this is the peach vanilla syrup. I have a little bit of that left from last year. A little bit of hot pepper jelly from last year. I love this so much. This is so good on a cracker with a little bit of cream cheese and a dollop of this on top. It's like a super awesome snacky appetizer. So we'll enjoy some of that this holiday season. And then I have, have my floral jellies from my friend. I'm gonna pull those out when I start making rolls this, this winter. Here's our crab apple jelly we made this fall in the previous video and the honey that we put away as well. Uh, two quarts of honey and a little more honeycomb along with that. Down here we have, this is those two jars of apple fruit roll up I made for my kids. I just need to pull these out and let them snack on them. We'll probably do that over winter break because there's no reason to keep them longer. But then we have seven pints of ketchup, the homemade ketchup we made. We're eating this already. We love it. <clears throat> then more applesauce. And here's a box of pints of applesauce. Four more quarts of applesauce. And then I have some apple pie filling that I made. Seven quarts of apple pie filling or apple crisp filling or whatever. And then the last one we have down here is the barbecue sauce that I made. It turned out pretty spicy. So it's it's a little, it's a little, it's too spicy to just like pour on stuff. But I think it'll be a good marinade. Uh, that's what we'll do with the pantry challenge. We'll find some good uses for what to do with this. A little bit too spicy barbecue sauce. Also down here you can see I have some of my buckets in here. We f come fill up our rice jar from the kitchen from in here. And this other one back here is rice too. So we also keep long-term food storage in here in our closet. These are things that are canned in number 10 cans. And so they are all set for really long-term storage. So we don't, this is not what we go through and rotate through on a regular basis. This is for emergency longer term, longer term storage. I do have some more buckets of rice and wheat over here as well, but I just can't keep everything in the pantry out there. So I will go to the kitchen and I'll show you our pantry in the kitchen. And that's where I keep some more of these buckets, these open buckets that we're pulling from. I also have in here a little bit, it, it kind of depends on the season, uh, more or less 
depending on how much we've used, but I have overflow in here of just our kitchen pantry as well. So I'll show that to you. This is some overflow from our kitchen pantry. Some things that I, I prefer to store in these hard plastic totes um, when I have excess. I don't like to keep too much in the pantry that's in, you know, plastic or paper, the type of things that um, mice could chew through if, if mice were going to eat some of this, this kind of popcorn, cornmeal nuts and nuts and fruits extra salt in here also cornmeal cornstarch popcorn baking soda and like i said almonds chia seeds pepperoni this is our kitchen pantry inside and um, this is where we keep mostly a lot of our store-bought stuff and the things that we cycle through more quickly so on the top shelf i have generally cereals and snacky things. And then we have like nuts and breads. Oh, there's chips back there. This, I've got a bin of onions right here. And then in the bottom, you see, then I get my, my buckets of things that I pull from regularly. I keep pastas in here. There's extra yeast, some store-bought potatoes, some kind of random canned goods, just kind of random things. Some more pickles and jelly and peanut butter, marinated artichoke hearts, clams for clam chowder. Those are just kind of like random things that I keep. Is that chilies? Yeah, diced green chilies. Little jellies from Aldi for charcuterie. So those are some of the like random things. Oh, this doesn't actually belong here. This goes down here. So then I have my can rotating shelves. The rotation isn't really necessary because we go through these things so quickly, but the idea is you put them in the top and they come out the bottom. So this is theoretically the oldest. I say theoretically because sometimes kids come in here and just play with the can rotators. So <clears throat> you never actually know. I've got some canned beans for convenience, canned pineapple, sweetened condensed milk. And then down here we do evaporated milk olives, tomato sauce, canned pumpkin, that's canned coconut milk, diced tomatoes, and then normally we have tuna fish too. So we actually need to stock up on tuna fish. In here we have our buckets as well. This one says rice open, which means I have two open rices, but oh well, that's nobody's sad to have too much rice. This one, this one has flour in it, and these two both have flour as well. That one is wheat that we grind in our wheat grinder. This one is sugar for baking, and this one is oats. Got some things ready for Christmas. But back in here, we have some other things. There is rice and dry beans. And there's another dry bean and then black beans and split peas. And then a few other random canned goods. Back here are some random like sauces and syrups and things. About a month and a half ago, I got into the garlic and broke open the heads and went ahead and planted all the biggest cloves of garlic to be my garlic for next year. But I, but I took all the smaller cloves and put them in the refrigerator so that I can use those quickly before I use my soft nut garlic. This is my hard nut garlic. And you can see that even in the refrigerator, this garlic is already starting to sprout. Hard nut garlic is ready to go to seed and ready to start growing again much faster than the soft nut garlic. Next, I'm gonna show you some things that we have in our freezer things that we produce on the homestead. And these are the things that we're going to be using first. Things in the in the freezer are the most likely to, you know, you can lose them in a power outage. They're, they're preserved for the smallest amount of time. So in the fridge inside the house, we actually have sauerkraut and pickles and pickles and pickles and pickles. Here are some diced tomatoes. And basically I put these like uh, two cans, so a quart, a little bit of zucchini. I think there's some more of that somewhere else. 
I have some pork broth and some beef broth. There is a bag of tomato puree. This is like, I hit the end of the produce of the garden season. And I'm just like, this is all I've got in me right now is I can puree it and throw it in the freezer. That's what I've got. So, and a bag, a bag of tomatoes that probably would just put in a pot and puree as well. A couple of bags. This is all that says apples and sugar. Uh, there's some more zucchini and there is, there's some more zucchini as well. Now I'm outside in the garage at our overflow fridge. This is where I have the pureed pumpkin. This is where I have my lard storage. Also out here I have, this is my little cheese cave and I have all my homemade cheeses. In the garage we also have our deep freeze. And as may be obvious by all the lard that is in that fridge, we processed one of our pigs recently. And so this freezer has a whole bunch of pork in it right now. And then also our three turkeys that we raised on the homestead last year. This is bacon that has been cured, but not smoked. So we need to get together with someone that has a smoker and get our bacon smoked. But here is, let's see, this is all breakfast sausage. Same thing with the ham cured, but unsmoked. We've got all our bratwurst frozen in here. There is butter that we bought when it went on sale. So we have all the ham roasts and, and everything in here. And in here, we also have three turkeys. Also here in the garage, I have some of our like root cellar type crops. Um, but I actually am missing some because I haven't really harvested all the carrots and beets that are out in the garden and they're okay out there. We, like we're not, we don't really ever freeze completely solid in the ground, but I should probably get those out of the ground so that we can use them. So carrots and beets are in the garden. I have these butternut squash that we grew. I've got eight big butternut squash. I haven't started using those yet. And then I have the onions. These are our storage onions, the Patterson variety. A couple more pumpkins that I need to roast and puree. And Then I have our potatoes that are trying to sprout in the cold, dark garage, but they're okay. Peel the sprouts off and wash them up and they look really great and, and are delicious. We also have some sweet potatoes that we grew, but we are having trouble trying to figure out where to store them. We're probably gonna store them in the house in the pantry because we were trying to store them in the garage, but mice are annoyingly good at locating things of nutritional value. So we brought them inside from storing in the garage to keep any critters out of them. One of the first big times where we pulled a whole bunch from our pantry was for Thanksgiving. And for Thanksgiving, we had a family feast and we ate a turkey that we had produced on our homestead. We used all the fresh herbs. We used sweet potatoes from our homestead. We have potatoes, but Jeremy actually used some other potatoes. So we didn't have our homegrown potatoes for Thanksgiving, but it's okay. We made pumpkin pies with pumpkin puree that we produced on our homestead this year. We pulled out the wheat ground grinder and home ground some wheat to make rolls for Thanksgiving. So we had a great Thanksgiving feast, feasting upon the bounty that our homestead created this last year. So this isn't the totality of everything we produced on our homestead this year, but this is what we have in our pantry going into the start of the new year and what we're gonna be pulling from for the pantry challenge this year. And our goal now at this point is to use all of this food that we produced. This was our first full year on the homestead and we went really hard on a lot of different things. And we noticed this issue with cash flow on the homestead. And the idea is that you're putting a lot of money into things at the beginning and you don't really see the results of that until much later. Now, this is the idea of a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture, or a farm share, where you help out the farm by help, by paying into it from the beginning because that's when they need all the cash and the produce and things are not coming until later. So we've put a lot of money into our homestead this last year 
to do all the things that we needed to do to produce a lot of food. So at this point, the money's gone, but the food is here. So now we get to enjoy all the food and all of the hard fruits of our labors, literally by enjoying our pantry this winter and knowing that all this food came from our homestead. So our challenge for ourselves is to eat up this food in our pantry to find creative ways to use the things that we were able to create ourselves. Like I mentioned last year, we always have plenty of fresh citrus here in the winter time. It's good for our immunity and for our health. And I was born in Arizona and my kids are all growing up loving grapefruit, oranges, all the citrus we can get our hands on. So we definitely buy, buy in a lot of citrus but I do step up my efforts in the winter time during this pantry challenge to make a lot more homemade bread and homemade crackers that are things that I normally buy from the store. This pantry challenge is also a good feedback loop to kind of tell me and give me ideas about my garden for next year and what things we liked using and what things we need more of, what things we need maybe don't need to grow so much of, but I love the pantry challenge. I love sharing the things that we are cooking with our homegrown food because for me, that is a big part of why I garden and why I love gardening is so that I can make delicious, fresh homemade food with these things that I, that I grow. But meanwhile, I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and get to spend some time with family and friends and I will see you on the next video.